All right, here we go. So, Hop and Sting, it's in Grapevine, Texas, basically uh, outskirts of Dallas, right? It's a Oops. suburb. Suburb of Dallas, never mind. All right, so um, what got me is they have a four pack of a Imperial Espresso Stout. So let's see what happens. Um, it's called Frigid Underworld, which is a good concept because it's pitch black down there. Uh, and the Frigid Underworld, or is it, yeah, Underworld often describes the cold, deep waters of the polar seas. This is a realm where the waters <clears throat> are dense, cold, and black. This is a home of giants and weird monsters and beautiful things. Like the seas are Frigid uh, Underworld Espresso Stout is dense, cold, and black. This beer is smooth and velvety with a classic uh, roasty character and modest sweetness. Notes of dark fruits, chocolate, coffee gives a well-rounded flavor and then locally roasted espresso beans for that extra kick. So we've got 12 ounces, 21 PO gravity, and it ended at uh, the 5 PFG. So the original gravity was like 0 0.021 and then it ended at five which is what causes a beautiful 8.9% alcohol by volume. And it's saying that it's 70 IBUs, which I love. So most stouts, porters and all that, they have their IBUs low. They don't feel that they're considered um, bitterness. The, most of the bitterness focuses on hops. As a cook, as a chef, as a person that handles that stuff, bitterness comes in a few varieties. We know the classic one is burned. When you get to it, there's a lot of flavors in between before you get to straight burnt. And there's a bitterness within it. Then from that, you can get bitterness from other foods, things that are natural. But the number one is from uh, green plants. A lot of people that are super tasters don't like broccoli and stuff uh, within the, the cells of the plants. It just has a lot of natural bitterness. So for me, it's not fair to keep all those low and then hops is just high. It's like, no, the level of bitterness can definitely vary in all those things. So for me, this means be ready for a punch of just straight dark uh, imperial stout and some coffee because they're both bitter. But for some reason, I love mocha. Mocha has chocolate bitterness and coffee bitterness, and I just love it. It just, they seem to cancel each other out. So let's see, ooh, it already looks pretty. All right, the body is lighter than I thought, but it definitely is pretty. Slow down, slow down, there we go. Let's see if I got this. Oh, these are my Barrel House glass. They make some great beers. That's when I first had a, did I'm spilling anything? No. I think there's a little more, but oh well. All right. Yep, has a very sweet, toasty, almost like in the, the burnt area, but it's like right. Uh, so have you ever had um, a quad? They have a very deep sweetness. So once you get that smell, you can kind of see the resemblance in them. This does have the little sweetness. So let's see. Pretty damn smooth. Honestly, the body's not that heavy. It's definitely an imperial, so you're gonna get a nice uh, super char flavor, but it's not overwhelming. If you're not used to that kind of flavor, you don't like that flavor, I don't recommend it. So it's not a super heavy stout. It's not the heaviest I've had. The body is a little lighter, but the straight bitterness and the coffeeness and the caramel is all in there, but it's deep and it's definitely dark. So it doesn't have any resemblance of a quad, but on the nose, you get that sweet, toasty, malty, so you get kind of like a quad sense, but on the taste buds, it's, it's enjoyable. Yep, and then the after flavor is beautiful. It leaves a little linger. Um, I could feel the zing of the bitterness on the side, so that lets me know that they went very dark on the, the malts and stuff like that as best they could without going overboard, because yeah, there's Rasputin. First time you sip it, it's like you're licking charcoal. <laughs> it's crazy. So, all right, <clears throat> nice one, all right, hop and sting. Nice one, I like this one, but I'm into stout, so. Good job anyways, and that coffee was beautiful. Um, honestly, the hint of sweetness is very mellow compared to the sweetness, so anyone that doesn't have a big sweet tooth, this would be like your dessert right there. It'd be just enough to keep you going, but all the beautiful bitterness and the toasty and the caramelization will keep you in in intrigued and indulging and enjoying yourself, so. Please uh, add me on, make comments if you like it. If you're near Dallas and you haven't tried it, try it. If you're in Austin, they have it here. Try it, Houston. Those are the ones I know. Um, they're probably distributing pretty far. It's like, we'll see. Anyways, uh, hopefully this is something informative that helps you understand stouts, see where you're at. Uh, 
I'm about to make a stout in a couple of days, so I know a little more in depth and they do everything has hops in it. So people say, I don't like hoppy beers, but all of them have hops to tone down the sweetness enough so you enjoy it because it basically would taste very sweet. But that's for the yeast to enjoy to give you beautiful alcohol so you can enjoy your beer. So other than that, thank you for watching and you have a great night.